Hello, this is James Barrett, the WebLogic Server Product Management Team. I want to quickly show you a new feature we just introduced in WebLogic Server 10.3.4 in mid-January 2011. This is for coherent server lifecycle management. This ties coherent standalone server instances like standalone JVMs like uh, default cache servers into the lifecycle management that was possible before with WebLogic Server Node Manager to manage WebLogic Server managed servers. We can now do that with coherent servers that are outside the scope of WebLogic Server. And that really allows me to manage the lifecycle of Coherence JVMs completely remotely from the administration server. So I can use the WebLogic Server console via a web interface or a scripting interface like WebLogic Server scripting tool based on Jython or the JMX APIs to go directly from Java to access an mBean that will pass along my configuration, which I'll show you momentarily. Essentially, this is just a, a cluster definition which can come in the um, scope of a Tango Saw Coherence Override XML file. And some specific values that would be um, for each JVM, which we're calling a coherent server. And this Node Manager client will kind of merge those together and talk to the Node Manager instance running on a remote operating system instance and start the processes from there. We also tie this into node manager capabilities for restarting processes if their crashes, uh, crash recovery is enabled. So if you were to have a JVM crash on one of these machines, node manager would automatically restart that for you as well. Let's go take a look. So as you can see, I'm using WebLogic Server 10.3.4 here, brand new release. Just log into the console and in the environment area you'll see this new thing called coherent servers. So coherence clusters were previously introduced in, a, in an early release of WebLogic Server. This allows us to create the override file definition and some of the unicast and multicast settings that apply to the cluster as a whole. But if I look at a coherent server, this allows me to get much more fine grain. And in this example I'm targeting it to a specific machine which is really an operating system instance. I specify the cluster, this is optional, and some specific things about this JVM such as uh, again a little bit more fine grain on the, the port definition. I also have a server start tab where I can specifically call out the exact class path that I want to use and optional JVM arguments. You can also specify different uh, uh, values here um, but the, those are not required. Uh, you can just click more info here for, for detail on those, but in this example I set a couple of extra jars in my class path along with some special um, coherence arguments, uh, but you can pass along anything you'd like there. And let's go ahead and go to the control tab here. Um, I'm going to do that over here so I can do many of them at once. So you can see I have three JVMs at once. They're all in the shutdown state. I'm going to kick them off by hitting start here, and they're should all be in the process of starting. Yep, in the process of starting. So let's go look at that. I have Node Manager running. And when I install WebLogic Server as a Windows um, platform, the last option in the GUI installer will be to install Node Manager as um, a Windows service, and I usually do that. You can also just start it um, via um, this value right here, start node manager command, and that's in the web, WL server 10.3 server bin folder. And you can also do that via WebLogic server scripting tool. So there's a lot of options there to start node manager. In my case it was already running. Let's go see if these are up and running now. Yep, they're running. I'm going to go quickly look at my log file for node manager. In this case you can see the path up here. Common node manager, node manager log, that's just the default. Uh, normally you'd put it someplace else outside of your installation. But one of the things you'll see here is that you actually get the full command line that was used to start the process in your node manager log. So here's the dash D options, the name of the server. Um, so all of the configuration that we had earlier is there. And you also can go look at the coherent server output looks like standard coherence log. So thanks for looking at this new feature. I think you'll find it very useful for managing coherence clusters.